Hi friends, it's Andrew Goodall here again from Nature's Image Photography and I'm going to start this video with a question. Have you ever looked up in the night sky and seen this, and despite your best efforts, ended up taking a photo that looked more like this? And after trying a little harder, maybe the best you could do was something like this. Well, if those shots look familiar, stick around, because in this video I'm going to tell you how I took this shot, and a few more like it on my Panasonic Lumix G9. But before we get started, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button so you can keep in touch with all my content on the G9 and my entire world of photography. Now I've photographed the moon many times before, but it occurred to me recently that I've never done it on the G9 with the Leica Panasonic 100-400mm lens, so I was curious to give it another go. Recently, a couple of nights before the full moon, I got my tripod out and went to work, and I decided to make a tutorial out of it. So, first of all, why is the full moon such a difficult subject to get right? It all comes down to contrast. When you shoot the moon in the night sky, you're shooting a white object lit by the sun against a much darker background. The photo I'm showing you is cropped, but when you look at the original uncropped version, you can see that the majority of this photograph is not the moon, but the black sky. Now when it comes to exposure, cameras don't like a lot of black. To a camera, too much black equals underexposed. So when the camera sees this much black area, it wants to let in extra light to brighten things up. But in brightening up the sky, the moon always comes out overexposed. This is why it's important to have total control over your exposure when you shoot the moon. If your camera chooses the exposure, your moon won't just be a bit bright, it could be 10 or 15 stops overexposed. So much so that even exposure compensation won't save you. So now I'm going to share with you my unscripted, unrehearsed and fairly rambling video that I recorded as I was taking my moonshots. As I've said, I'm using my Panasonic Lumix G9 with the Leica Panasonic 100-400mm lens, but almost everything I talk about could be applied to pretty much any DSLR camera. I'm shooting in fully manual mode, which means I control all the settings myself, that's the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO. This gives me total control of the exposure, which is really what this is all about. You could try the same settings I've used on your next outing, but results could still vary depending on the conditions on the night. And the sharpness of your shot may also depend on the size and quality of your telephoto lens. So here you can see now the moon is lined up in the frame of my shot. It rises so quickly that every couple of minutes I have to readjust the tripod because I'm using single point focus and I've got the single point in the centre of the frame and every minute or so the moon rises so much that it's not in the centre of the frame anymore so I've got to keep on making these adjustments. Um, now there's a couple of things that I've done to make this a more successful outing. I've got the camera on a tripod. Even though I'm shooting still at reasonably fast shutter speeds, um, I put the camera on a tripod just to be certain. And importantly, I've turned the image stabilizer off. Uh, having the stabilizer on is not a good idea when you're using a tripod because the stabilizer is designed to undo a certain amount of movement that comes with a handheld camera. When you're not using a handheld camera, sometimes the stabiliser can cause problems rather than preventing them. So I've turned that off. Uh, I've got my camera set to constant preview, so that uh, as I change my settings, the screen gets brighter and darker, so I can see before I take it roughly what my photograph's going to look like. I've got my single point focus in the centre, as I said, I've just got to make sure that either I bring the camera down or the moon rises up into the point where I've got it uh, directed. Uh, you probably can tell already it's not a full moon. That is a deliberate choice because when you photograph the full moon at night um, the sun is almost directly opposite on the other side of the earth shining directly into the moon and it fills up every crater and every detail with light and the result can be very flat and two-dimensional. Uh, when you take your photograph of the moon a few days before or a few days after full uh, then you start to see a more three-dimensional effect because the sun's shining across the surface at more of an angle. It puts uh, a bit of shadow into the edges of the craters and you get a much more, uh, much more a sense of it being a three-dimensional globe shape rather than just looking like a, a flat white dinner plate. Uh, so the settings I've chosen, at the moment I'm at 200 ISO, I'm using a tripod because there's no reason not to be, um, and 200 ISO gives you a nice noise-free image. Um, I'm using um, 
single point focus as I said. Uh, I'm using multi metering, I'm not using sing um, spot metering. I don't need to change my metering mode even though some would say well why not just meter for the moon. I don't need to because when I'm using constant preview and I've got this effect showing me what my photo is going to look like before I even take it. I don't need to mess around with my metering mode. I do need to shift the tripod again. There we go. It's not a very firm tripod. My good tripod after years and years of faithful service fell apart not long ago and I haven't replaced it yet. So uh, that's why I'm using a tripod that's not super steady. Um, now I'm shooting at f8 um, at Extend it all the way out. This is with the uh, the Leica Panasonic 100 to 400 millimeter lens. The lens opens to f6.3. Um, a lot of um, the experts, when they review lenses, always seem to come to the conclusion that lenses tend to be sharper at f8 uh, with less distortion. I've got my own theories about whether that's entirely true or not, but for the sake of it, uh, again, I'm using a tripod, so why not shoot at f8? Uh, and then I can just choose the shutter speed I want. Uh, now, importantly, I'm setting my release mode to 10 second delay. Uh, it's not a real steady tripod. I've got my image stabilizer turned off and there will be a fair bit of wobble when I press the button. Um, but over the 10 second delay that's gone. So here I'm going to take this shot at a 125th of a second. You can see the, the camera's counting down and um, by the time the 10 seconds is up any tiny bit of wobbling from that lens will be gone. Luckily the, the breeze has dropped right now. Uh, I've got that shot and now I really can just try a few different speeds and when this whole process is over uh, I'm going to get the photos up onto the computer and at the end of the video I'll show you a few of the raw results and then a few of the pictures after I've had a go at them in Adobe Camera Raw to um, process those raw photographs and give you some finished images. Let's just readjust that tripod again. Now we're going to do one at a 250th of a second. You can see uh, even though it's dusk and there's still a fair bit of daylight, uh, the contrast between the moon and the sky is so much that uh, the sky is coming out very black and that's simply because if I want to get the moon right uh, I have to underexpose um, the sky. If I was to get the sky right the moon would come out very overexposed. So I go the other way, uh, I make the sky a lot darker, but that gives me a lot more detail in the moon itself. So this photograph is being taken really only half an hour after the sun's gone down. It's still fairly light, but to this photograph you would think it was taken in the middle of the night. Okay, so there's a whole lot of me making things up as I went along. Now it's time to look at some results. I'm starting with the worst shot of all and I took this one deliberately to show you what I might have taken had I been shooting in auto. Not only is it overexposed, it's also not sharp despite the 10 second delay. It's likely a puff of wind was to blame. With such a big lens it only takes a tiny amount of movement to spoil the photo. Now we finish with some better shots and remembering that each photo was taken at 200 ISO and f8, the different exposures are all down to shutter speed. The first one was taken at 125th of a second, the second one at 250 and the final one was taken at a 500th of a second. It turns out the 125th of a second was probably nearest to the perfect exposure and you're going to see a big difference in the raw files. But after a bit of editing in Adobe Camera Raw, you can see that even the darker exposures turned out to be perfectly good finished photos. So, I hope out of all this you've learned a thing or two, but just remember that the settings you need may vary depending on how clear your sky is. Hopefully you'll use a better tripod than I did, and if you use these tips as a starting point you'll be well on your way to getting some great moon photos of your own. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.